The Netherlands has had a long-term commitment to promote excellence in research. And this has resulted in several universities among those top ranked, and also a top performance of close to 830 ERC grants over the years, the European Research Council gold standard for excellent research. Please welcome our next speaker, Ingrid van Engelshoven, Minister of Education, Culture and Science of the Netherlands. So we are very excited to hear you share your secrets. <laughs> well, there are no secrets. Um, and I'm happy to share um, my thoughts here with, with you. Good morning, everyone. And uh, thank you for inviting uh, me, me here. It's a great pleasure to be here. And I stand here in a long tradition of friendly exchange between our two countries, a tradition that began centuries ago with the Hanseatic League, the alliance that was formed in the Middle Ages already by trading cities around the Baltic Sea. With the exchange of goods also came the exchange of people and the exchange of ideas, which continues to enrich our lives today. Whether it's well-designed bookcases, I think there aren't many households in the Netherlands that don't have a billy in the house. It's reliable cars or songs of Cornelis Vreeswijk. You know very well, but he was Dutch. As early as the 17th century, Queen Christina of Sweden maintained close relationships with the Netherlands. She had the Dutchman Hansius and Vosius purchase books for her library all throughout Europe. And she commissioned Zuerius van Boxhorn to write a grammar. And even Joost van den Vondel, one of our greatest poets, praised her in a verse. She also welcomed the Dutch businessman, Louis de Geer, with open arms when he brought his knowledge of weaponry and blast furnaces to Sweden. Traces of him of his time here can still be seen here today, like his library in Norrköping. Do I say that right? And two of his descendants would go on to become prime minister of your country. Another descendant became prime minister of the Netherlands. So clearly, Christina had an eye for talent. But when she tried to seduce legendary Dutch legal scholar Hugo de Groot, also known as Grootjes, to become one of her state councillors, her advances were rejected. De Groot was working as a, Swedish, as a Swedish representative in Paris at the time, and as a state councillor, he would have advised Christina on foreign policy. She also wanted him to compile a scientific library for her. But de Groot refused, a decision he would pay for dearly. When he left Stockholm, he was shipwrecked and later died of the consequences. De Groot's tragic end, however, didn't det detract from Christina's motives. Her desire was to illuminate the unknown, driven by curiosity and a thirst for knowledge. And the way I see it, that's exactly what science is all about. Curiosity leads to new insights and scientific breakthroughs. It helps us to push the boundaries of knowledge. And that in itself is invaluable. The pursuit of knowledge for its own sake. Exploration for the sake of exploration. But it also leads to progress, producing answers to pressing social issues and new ways to apply our knowledge. And this makes scientific curiosity essential to our collective well-being and prosperity. And today, I'd like to share with you how we approach science in the Netherlands. And I want to do so based on the new vision I presented recently. Every four years, the Minister of Science in the Netherlands presents a new set of policy ambitions for the future. And for this new vision, 
we entered in a dialogue with scientists from all kinds of disciplines and all ages, and with representatives from higher education and society at large. And I think, and I think we managed to write a vision that doesn't only reflect my ambitions, but those of the entire Dutch knowledge sector as well. A vision that consists of three ambitions, global impact, social relevance, and the Netherlands as a breeding ground for talent. Ideally, one that's part of a much larger network, much like a Hanseatic city. But first and foremost, I'm committed to make global impact. Science is and has always been an international field. You can't build a wall around knowledge and social issues don't stop at national borders. Queen Christina knew that already. And in the 17th century, she drew on the expertise of many scientists in Sweden as well as abroad. And in the 21st century, this free exchange of knowledge has become so commonplace that we almost take it for granted. But now we face new challenges that call for different forms of cooperation. Take the funding of the large-scale research facilities, such as the Square Kilometer Array. As the co-founders of this project, the Netherlands and Sweden stood shoulder to shoulder, together overcoming obstacles on the road to making this a reality. And I very much look forward to seeing the, the result of this collaboration. But this kind of infrastructure, you can only do it internationally. And in this context, global impact would be, wouldn't be possible without the European Union. And together with Sweden, the Netherlands will continue to pursue excellence, contributing to the foundation we need for the next EU framework program, Horizon Europe. The Netherlands and Sweden are like-minded countries. Both are knowledge-based societies. And there's much to be, gained, to be gained when like-minded countries like ours work together on a project like Horizon Europe. Because together we can create a strong European framework program based on excellence and impact. The only way the Netherlands can compete internationally is if we have a solid base, a strong scientific community. And this is why I'm investing in strategic cooperation and profiling through so-called sector plans, in which science faculties commit to strategic cooperation at the sector level. Not only do these sector plans help researchers within the same discipline find each other and connect, they also streamline strategic decision-making in the areas of research, education, and societal goals. And this makes it easier to do, the, to do things like expand our research capacity and attract and retain talented young researchers. My second ambition is to further strengthen the ties between science and society and to improve science social relevance. And as far as I'm concerned, science doesn't always have to lead to direct results. Scientific research should be free to raise more questions than it answers and to produce results that make us realize how much we don't know. But no matter how much freedom scientists have, they still are part of society, which means that they should be open to questions from outside their own community and that they have an obligation to share their knowledge with the public, even if it's not right away or if it has not led to a useful application. Share your knowledge. And to encourage this kind of interaction, we have a national science agenda. It started a few years ago with a national survey of citizens, businesses, government bodies, and civil society organizations asking them what questions they wanted science to answer. This produced roughly 12,000 knowledge questions, which we collected in 25 routes covering the entire spectrum of scientific research. And our goal with this agenda is to achieve scientific breakthroughs, to find solutions to societal issues using input from every discipline, and to answer society's questions. 
The agenda encourages broad-based cooperation within the public knowledge chain, as well as with societal partners from public and semi-public sectors and the business community. To make this possible, our research efforts will be focused on long-term projects running for six to eight years. Being connected to the world around you also means being open and transparent. Paywalls for publicly funded research results, such as scientific articles and data, are in conflict with this, with this approach. That's why I'm committed to promoting open science and open access in the Netherlands, in Europe and beyond. And we are leading by example. We have a national open science platform, which brings together knowledge institutions to realize ambitions like achieving 100% open access by 2020, making research data, data suitable for reuse, finding new ways to recognize and reward achievements in open science, and laying the foundations for citizen science, and by appointing a national coordinator for open science, the Netherlands has reconfirmed its leading role, inspiring several other countries to follow in our footsteps. Being connected to society also means communicating about what you are doing. Maintaining a dialogue between science and society allows people to see how research contributes contributes to social and economic progress. The, this kind of communication helps those outside the scientific community to separate facts from fiction and invites them to contribute to scientific developments. Science also holds up a mirror to society, stimulating our imagination, imagination, imagination by offer, offering us new ways of looking at the world. But scientists benefit from this dialogue too. It can provide inspiration for new research topics and help them to navigate difficult ethical issues. My third ambition for the Netherlands is to remain a breeding ground and a haven for talent. To ensure that science can continue to drive progress, we need new generation of excellent researchers who are able to approach problems from multiple perspectives. And in order to achieve this, I want to improve job security for researchers and to change the way we value and reward their work. I want to finance experiments in this area, and I will also work at the European level to help bring about this much needed change in my view. Because I think that we need to move towards a system that also values things like quality of education, leadership in your field, and social impact. Personally, I'm also committed to diversity in research. We need more researchers who can provide different cultural perspective. And we need more female researchers, especially in the beta sciences where they are most sorely needed. And this year, in order to increase diversity among researchers, I work together with representatives from the world of science to host the European Gender Summit in the Netherlands. And based on the results of this summit, we are now working on a national action plan, which will be presented next spring. Dear friends in science, a lot has changed since the time of, Prince, of Queen Christina. In many ways, our lives have become so much more pleasant. We know more, we are healthier, we live longer, and we're much more com comfortable in almost every way. All thanks to science. And I look forward to learning more about how you approach science here in Sweden. And I hope that my own contribution can be of use to you so that we can continue to expand our knowledge and give our children and grandchildren the future they deserve. Thank you very much.
Thank you very much, Ingrid van Engelshoven, for this nice talk and with a historical review of how long our two countries go back. Uh, we are very impressed by the work you have done with the national science, scientific agenda, where you have involved the whole community. Uh, it's also notable that Dutch universities are very successful in attracting EU funds. So I wonder, is that based on that you have a good uh, European strategy, a well-communicated strategy for this on, at a national level, or are there other... I continue to say secrets because we wonder how you're doing. Um, well, uh, what, what, what we do is uh, you have the, the European system in, in, in Horizon uh, uh, 2020 and in Horizon Europe, um, which has three pillars. Mm -hmm. uh, the ERC for fundamental research, the mission-driven uh, research, and uh, innovation in, in pillar three. And what we do in the Netherlands, we kind of match that system. Mm. Uh, so uh, we invest in fundamental research, we have mission-driven uh, research, and um, we promote uh, uh, innovation. Mm. And we all have, we have our own granting system uh, for it. But this is kind of what we do. We match the European system, mm. uh, so it's easy to connect what we are doing in the Netherlands to uh, what uh, you can get for grants in, in, in Europe. And oh. that's, uh, that's basically the secret. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Just copy the European yes. system. Thank you. Uh, uh, another thing, if you compare the Dutch funding landscape with that of Sweden and, and also Switzerland, you have more focus on programming, so more top-down than bottom-up. What is your view on this of balancing between the, the known challenges where you need to, where you know where you should focus uh, research, mm -hmm and being prepared, invest in research to be prepared for the unknown? Yeah. Well, um, it actually is uh, continuously a struggle. Uh, also between um, uh, my department, uh, where we basically focus more on the fundamental, the free research, and also the Ministry of Economic Af mm. Affairs, what uh, is basically more uh, looking towards uh, key technologies uh, towards missions, mm -hmm. and it's always looking for uh, all, all time looking for the right balance. So mm -hmm. uh, recently, we shifted uh, money uh, from uh, uh, kind of our second pillar to the first uh, to give more room for fundamental. The excellence uh, pillar, uh, yeah, for, mm -hmm. to, to give more room for fun fundamental research. But it's uh, every. Uh, year uh, almost every day we're looking for uh, the right uh, uh, balance mm -hmm. and uh, it, it never matches perfectly. Mm -hmm. It's well, uh, uh, yeah. It's 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 looking at it every day and mm -hmm. see whether mm -hmm. are we dividing, mm -hmm. are we putting our money mm -hmm. in in the right place. Mm -hmm. I think I think you have found some good balance there, looking at your at your success rate at the ERC. So <laughs> well, uh, uh, yes, uh, if you. Measured by a success, success in Europe, yes, we, 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 we do very well. Mm -hmm. uh, but a lot of our researchers uh, uh, really think that we should put more money in mm -hmm. fundamental uh, research. Mm -hmm. So, uh, well, um, you can't satisfy all. Mm -hmm. and, and I was thinking, uh, Queen Christina, who you mentioned, she was very good at attracting scholars to Sweden, not always with a happy ending, <laughs> but... Uh, but um, is there, do, does the Netherlands have any strategy to attract international uh, researchers and scholars to come to the Netherlands? Uh, well, I think there are basically two things. Uh, what we are looking at, how can we create interesting ecosystems um, where um, universities, uh, um, organizations in fundamental research, uh, more applied researchers, uh, the business community, all work together in the same ecosystem towards the same goals and, and in the same field. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, we, you have to put them all together in um, the same area. Uh, what we see around in the uh, region of Eindhoven, which is very successful mm -hmm. in attracting att young talents from all over the world, they have everything you need together in, well, uh, one city, uh, mm -hmm. one campus. Mm -hmm. And... Um, that's what we're trying to do, is looking at different places. Where can we create this 
really high level ecosystems. Mm -hmm. So that's one. And the second thing is you have to be a great country to live in. Mm -hmm. uh, so people uh, have to value your healthcare, mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, culture, mm -hmm. uh, well, uh, housing. Mm -hmm. So it has to be Having great ecosystems, yeah. but being a lousy country to live in, mm. it doesn't work. Mm. So mm. you have to do both and invest in both. Mm. So offer a great uh, environment in a great country. Yeah. That's the secret. <laughs> oh, thank you very much for okay. sharing your advices. And I give a big applaud. And thank I want you. To, to impress uh, friends and family with oh. a Nobel dinner. Oh, wow. <laughs> And some dessert, which are noble coins in chocolate. I um, I don't know I if I'm good enough a cook to do this. Um, but you then you should I find share it someone. With my husband. Then you should find one. That's a good very good <laughs> suggestion. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you very much.